Welcome back to video three in my absolute beginner guitar series. If you haven't watched video one and two, you're really gonna wanna start with those ones because this is a progression in order. So everything builds on the last video. So if you haven't watched episode one and two yet, go into the link in the description below this video, check those out, watch those. And once you've been through those, come into lesson three. So I'm going to start exactly where lesson two ended. So I'm assuming you've been through that and you've practiced your E minor to G chord. So today, what we are gonna work on is a third chord and then smoothing out these chord changes so that you can do them a little bit better in a time. And once you unlock this third chord, that'll give you the chords that you need to play over a hundred songs with just those three chords. So that's what we've got looking forward to today. Let's get into it. So let's start off by warming up our hands again and working on just switching between this E minor and this G chord. Now all we're gonna do for this exercise here is start with our E minor, play each of the strings individually, and then switch to our G and play each of the strings individually. So that's the exercise right there. We're just playing each chord, all of the strings once before the switching the chords. And this is a great exercise to practice actually getting those changes a little bit smoother because you're changing them a lot more and you can hear each of the strings individually so that you know if one's buzzing or muting. If you do get that, which you're probably still gonna be getting at this point, just readjust your fingers, try again and then try and flick the chord individually. So pause this video and try that out for a few minutes to warm up your hands and get used to what we're doing so that we can move on to what we're learning in today's lesson. So once you've done that, then we're gonna try a second warm up, which is just gonna be playing each of these chords four times before switching. E minor and then G. Just like that, at whatever speed you can play it comfortably, we're just trying to work on getting these nice smooth chords. Remember, not too hard and not too soft, just like you're painting with a paintbrush to get a nice, even, smooth chord ringing out. And just try and get these fingers placed nicely. The other thing to remember is that this fifth string on the G chord does not need to ring out in this version. Don't worry about that, but every other string we want to ring out nicely. Okay, pause the video, try that out for a few times, get our hands nice and quick and moving, and on to our third chord, which today is going to be the D chord. So as you can hear, that one's also a nice, bright, happy chord. The D chord has a much higher and brighter sound than the other two chords because it doesn't use these low note strings. We've only got the higher note strings. You got this bright, happy, cheery, lively sound, which works great when you contrast that with the darker sound of the E minor there. So to play this one, we're gonna start with our second finger, or the middle finger, on the second fret of the first string. Then you're gonna put your third finger, or your ring finger, on the third fret of the second string. Work on getting those two ringing out nicely first on their own because on this one, we're gonna have to add in a third finger, which is gonna be your first finger on the second fret of the third string. And then to end that off, you're also going to play the open fourth string. And right there is your full chord. So this one's probably a little bit trickier because you've got three fingers this time, so it's a little bit more awkward to get to, but they are pretty close together so you don't have to stretch out that much. So just do that, put your fingers down. Remember, use your fingertips. Make sure your fingers are nicely curled, and then you're gonna be able to get that there. 
You're gonna wanna pick those strings out individually so that you make sure everything's nicely ringing and then you can hear which strings aren't ringing out very nicely. What's probably gonna give you the most trouble is this first string here because this third finger is likely going to block it. So that's probably what's gonna give you the most trouble with this chord. You just gotta make sure this finger is up and out of the way and then that first string rings out nicely. So try that a few times. Until you've got it ring out smoothly and then you can try strumming it. Now, so the other thing that's a little bit different about this chord that you saw there is it only uses four strings, which is tricky for a lot of people to hit at the beginning is just four instead of the full six. And you can hear how in this chord we have that full six that's not super pleasant to sound. Now, what I would say at the beginning here is you don't have to worry too much about that because it'll sound better even if you hit all the strings, if you have a nice smooth strumming motion, than if you got really awkward timing with uh, just trying to hit these. So try and hit just the four strings, but don't be too concerned right now if you do end up hitting more than just those four. It's not as important as getting smoothly ringing out strings here. So once you can do that, Take a look at your right hand here and try and strum this a few times. Like the other ones, just try and get a nice steady even picking motion, not too hard, not too soft. Get everything ringing out clearly and cleanly and that's going to give you the most beautiful chords. With this one here in particular, it helps to have a fairly small strum. So that means, you know, you're not going that far. It's fairly small and gentle, as opposed to a big full strum. Because with that, your hand is just way further away from the strings, and it makes it harder to accurately hit the four strings. So a small strum is gonna help you here. Okay, so right there, with that, that brings our third chord. So pause the video, try and play that a few times, and try and do that on a nice steady one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on. Try that out on your own speed for a little bit, and then we'll move on once you've got kind of the hang of that. Practice that one on its own for a little bit until you can kind of get it ringing out clearly because after that we're going to jump in to try to play all three of these chords together. So this is going to be your biggest challenge so far because now we're playing three different chords all in a single chord progression. A chord progression is just an order of multiple chords. So this chord progression is going to be E minor, G, and then D. And then once we've played the D, then we're going to start back over at E minor again. So this exercise here, we're just going to do our same one, two, three, four on each chord before switching. What it's going to look like is this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and so on. You get the idea there. So that's just four strums of each chord before switching. Now your chord changes aren't going to be as fast as I just did them right there, but you can see where it eventually gets to. So don't worry about how much time it takes you to switch between them. That'll come with time. Focus more on getting clear ringing out chords. So, two, three, four. And then take your time and switch it. And then take your time, get a nice clearly ringing out chord. and try that out. At this point, your timing is not gonna be super consistent. It does just take a little bit of practice, but it will smooth out in time, and you just have to work on getting nice clear chords, and then the changes will happen as you've memorized the position 
and as your fingers just get more used to it and used to actually switching between them. Eventually you'll get to the point where your chords just switch instantly and you don't have to think about them, but for now you probably are going to have to think about them and readjust a few times and that's completely normal and completely expected. That's why we've got this full series to continue to bring you along. So try that one out a few times, and then the last thing I'm going to leave you with for today is one final exercise, which is just going to be individually picking out these chords with each string, and then switching between E minor to G to D. This is another great exercise to practice going from one chord to the next and making sure everything's ringing out nicely. So just like the other two chords, we're going to do it with all three now. And then just repeat just like that for a few minutes to get used to switching between the two and having them all ringing out nicely. And remember, if you are running into buzzing or things that aren't going that smoothly, then just readjust your fingers and get it working nicely. All right, so that's where I'm going to leave it off in this lesson. Now, I know right now, obviously, your chord changes are still pretty slow and everything's not ringing out smoothly all the time. It still probably feels pretty awkward. That's completely normal and to be expected. It just takes a little bit of time and practice to get this down. But right now, you know the building blocks of what it takes to play guitar and what it takes to play songs. These things you've learned in this last several videos are really the foundations of how to play guitar. You could at this point go and start learning some songs. I do have over 150 different song tutorials on my YouTube channel. There will be some things that you haven't learned that you come across in the song tutorials. But at this point, you do have the basics of what it actually means to play guitar. Now that being said, it can really help to spend some time focusing on the basics and the fundamentals, getting your chord changes smooth, getting your strumming nice and consistent and even, and then making everything just feel natural and effortless. And if you focus on getting that right first, it'll really put you a step ahead when you go to actually learn songs, and it'll make that whole process a lot easier. So if you've enjoyed this series and you want to continue on, then I encourage you to check out my 14-day chord challenge in the link in the description below. In this challenge, you're going to get a daily video challenge to do each day for 14 days or two weeks. And in that, we're going to target all the things to make your chords ring out smoothly and clearly every time. Learn all the major chords that you need to play thousands of different songs. And then get your strumming nice and clean and clear and smooth and have everything just effortless and easy. The challenge is really going to help you learn songs because it's going to focus on all the skills that you need to put them together. So that when you go to it, you learn them, it's far easier. And it's only two weeks long, so it should be very easy for people to get through, very manageable. If you've enjoyed this series, then I encourage you to check it out in the description below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe also to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.